Okay, traders, that's 1 p.m. Greenwich Mean Time. Um, if you can hear me and you can see the tip mail welcome screen, if you could type a Y in the chat box. Good stuff. Okay, we will uh, we'll get going here. Um, before we do, as always, we want to adhere to our risk disclaimer. Um, as we know, trading any financial instrument <coughs> carries an inherent amount of risk and you could end up losing uh, more capital than you necessarily have on deposit. More importantly for today's session, um, the views expressed by me here today are solely mine. They are not indicative or representative of those held by Tickmill UK or Tickmill Europe Limited. Uh, before we get into the charts, a uh, brief introduction uh, with respect to me for those who are joining us for the first time. Uh, my name is Patrick Munley. I, uh, after graduating from university, I joined a city PLC consulting firm. After a couple of years of learning the ropes, I left with some colleagues and went on to co-found and successfully exit a consulting startup uh, post-emerger late 2004. I then moved on to explore my passion for markets with some capital to play with and some time on my hands, I started day trading or more appropriately day gambling, um, the S&P 500. And after some early beginner's luck, I racked up some pretty solid gains. However, as is often the case, the beginner's luck ran out. And as the market phase changed and I began to average down into losing positions, I pretty quickly gave back all my gains and ultimately experienced a six figure hit on my personal capital. Uh, to say that was a gut-wrenching and sobering experience is an understatement. So at this point, I decided I had to stand back and figure out if it was feasible for me to make a living from the market. So I decided to get serious about trading and sought out a mentor who uh, had an excellent track record in, uh, in trading the markets. Working with my mentor for a period of 18 months to two years, it was a period during which I upped not just my technical game in terms of researching and developing a strategy that suited my personality, uh, extensively back and forward testing and underpinning that with a rigorous risk management approach. But most importantly, during the period of mentorship, I significantly developed my mental gain. And probably the most important uh, watershed shift that I experienced was moving from being a goal orientated uh, individual focused on financial gains uh, to being purely process orientated. So what does that actually mean? Well, it means I had to stop focusing and what I could make from the markets. And I had to start focusing solely on managing my mindset to allow me to consistently execute my trading strategy, oftentimes in the face of no negative feedback from the markets in the, uh, in the form of losing trades. But once you make that shift and you become process orientated and you have that professional trading mindset, understanding the true nature of trading being a numbers game in which you're simply playing the probabilities, you lose the emotional investment and that hellish emotional roller coaster of living and dying by the outcome of individual trades. I'm no longer concerned with the outcome of individual trades or even strings of trade. My focus on the next 100 trades, because I know if I focus on excellence in execution, my edge will demonstrate itself over an extended series of outcomes. Uh, my multi strategy approach has delivered profitable annual returns since 2008. Uh, since 2013, the results trading performance you can see on the screen. I've also been managing investor capital through a managed account service, delivering annual positive returns. I'm currently responsible for managing a multi-million dollar portfolio. Uh, from 2010, I've also personally mentored over 100 private traders of all experience levels, from complete novices to former CME floor traders, in developing the technical and mental skills to reap consistent returns from the markets. I've consulted to numerous brokers and trading education firms, contributing written content, webinars, and live presentations on a range of topics from market analysis to trading strategy development and execution. In addition to my uh, fund management and mentoring, I'm also a resident market expert for Tickmill, providing uh, trade analysis on a daily basis and, uh, and also uh, providing setups, technical setups that I'm watching in the markets. You can subscribe to these through the, uh, the Tickmill blog and you can receive email alerts for those if you're interested. Uh, my other real passion project is as head of trading and trader education for a leading trading education brand called fxcareerswap.com. Um, 
we offer development and funding to retail trading talent. At FX Career Swap, we don't just develop retail traders' market and trading strategy knowledge. We work on mindset development through a structure program that culminates in managing the firm's capital at zero personal financial risk on a profit share basis. For those that are interested, um, you can uh, email the uh, link there on the screen, info at FX Career Swap, and someone will get back to you with more information, or you can give them a call there in London. Uh, the number is on the screen. So that gives you a, a flavor of my background, and, uh, and now let's move into today's discussion. So we are heading into a, uh, a particularly interesting period in markets. Obviously, we have the US elections coming up next week, and, uh, and that should offer uh, some significant volatility. And with that volatility, uh, we can anticipate opportunities to develop. Um, as always, because we're coming to the end of October, um, want to check in with the seasonality. Uh, this is a seasonal performance of specific instruments uh, over the past 20 years. And one thing that jumps out to me is that uh, the S&P November is actually its best, or, or on a seasonal basis, uh, delivers its best month of the year, along with, and somewhat counterintuitively, the dollar index has its second best month of the year. So um, as we head into these elections, uh, what we can anticipate, or, or certainly from a seasonal perspective, you can see that equity markets generally have a, a good period during um, November, but we'll see uh, in a minute how this can be slightly skewed uh, with the elections, because these, these seasonal heat maps don't specifically focus on election years, but we've got studies that do focus um, on election years. Before getting into those charts or revisiting those charts, as always, want to check in with positioning, and positioning uh, still suggests that, uh, that we're, we're stretched in terms of the euro and, uh, and pretty neutral in terms of the dollar. Hedge funds, uh, as of uh, as of last week, started selling. Or sorry, as of this week, started selling into uh, the euro after being on the bid for the past few weeks. And we've seen uh, we've seen a bit of a pullback in the euro at the moment. But we'll take a look at the charts in a minute. One uh, one options trade that's certainly worth paying attention to. Uh, this was a couple of weeks ago now. A big uh, options position was put into the market. Uh, a one fifteen fifty euro put on uh, on a five hundred million dollar. A 500 million euro uh, position was uh, was taken out of the market, and so that's something to uh, to keep in mind as we uh, as we go through this election period. Um, and this is uh, these are some snippets of of information that I've shared with the guys on the trading floor. This is important because um, this piece of information here is provided by City uh, City FX, their quant team. And they look at month end rebalancing and what signals we may get with respect to uh, rebalancing of portfolios and how that impacts the FX markets. And um, notably at the start of the week, because uh, markets were, were elevated, the, uh, the, the signal was to sell the US dollar. But as we've seen this pullback in markets, the signal is now actually to buy the US dollar. And the strongest signal um, comes against the Aussie, which has a, a sell signal. And so this um, this. This, this, this dynamic could impact the markets as we head into tomorrow uh, afternoon, which is, uh, which is the month end. We also here have um, a overlay, um, as we're thinking about heading into these elections, obviously thinking about in terms of how the markets are likely to trade. This is the, um, oops, not happened. Uh, this is the US dollar um, in 2016. So the, uh, the red line here is the 2016 price action. And this orange line is our current price action in terms of where we're at at the moment. And you can see that a, um, a decent bid came into the dollar through the elections. Um, down here, we've also got the positioning data for the dollar, which has been very stretched to the downside. And we're seeing a, a little bit of a, a downtick in terms of, in terms of the positioning now. Um, and this is also reflected in gold here. This is the gold chart of 2016 versus the, uh, the current gold price action, this triangle, we're gonna take a look at when we uh, review the charts in a minute. But uh, you can see that we, we certainly got a, a decent sell-off in terms of gold heading into the uh, elections in, the, uh, in 2016 versus now. And you can see the similarities in terms of price action. Also, um, this is the uh, NASDAQ performance during the 2016 election. And we can see that we certainly got a, uh, a sell-off before a recovery took place 
in terms of the NASDAQ. So just thinking in terms of these equity markets and some of the big <clears throat> instruments in terms of the dollar as we head uh, and gold as we, uh, as we head into next week, we want to be cognizant of some of these uh, potential if, certainly history may not repeat it exactly, but certainly the, the market always has a tendency or, or certainly displays a tendency for history to rhyme in terms of these pivotal events. Um, also shared this with the guys on my team. Uh, this is uh, a bunch of charts here. We have a quarterly chart of the NASDAQ and you can see here if we close at current levels or below, um, then, uh, then this chart is certainly starting to display some bearish qualities, a potential tweezer top here. Um, this is uh, the S&P 500 down here um, versus the 2016 election versus the price action we've seen here in 2020. And you can see we started a bit of a sell-off in the S&P. Obviously, the S&P bottomed the night of the election in, um, in 2016. So we'll see. We, uh, this is... Uh, this is this, the, the decline was 10 days into the election. And obviously we've seen a bit of a pullback in the S&P and we're gonna look at the chart in a minute. Um, this is the, this chart here uh, shows the price action in the S&P. This is the year 2000 here. And this, uh, this is the, um, the negative divergence we saw into that top in 2000. And you can certainly see similarities into, uh, into the high that we've seen in, uh, in recent days in terms of the S&P. This uh, chart down here is the Dow Jones versus uh, the, the decline that we saw in uh, between the periods of um, in 19, 20, uh, 1932. And uh, you can, again, you can see similarities. So um, again, certainly I wouldn't be trading off these overlays, but I've always got, I'm always cognizant of the, the potential for these overlays to, uh, to come into effect. And the last overlay we're going to look at here, this is, uh, current price action versus 1987. We uh, we know we had a significant crash in 87, and um, and you don't need to be any type of pattern geek to see similarities in terms of the current setup. And um, you know what when when I see these patterns or when you you know looking at these type of charts, I think you know you think to yourself what what could drive a replication of the price action? Well, a, a, a shot next week in terms of the election and or a contested election could, uh, could put some real risk into the market. And, uh, and that's the type of thing that could, or the type of dynamic that could drive, uh, drive this potential price action. Uh, we'll just quickly go run through. Um, the dollar tends to strengthen 100 days after a presidential election. So this is just something to bear in mind. I, as most of you all know, who, who, who join me here, I, I'm, I'm long-term or, or should I say structurally bearish the dollar, but can certainly make, start making the case in the near term for some, uh, for some dollar strength here. This is uh, a, an overlay versus what would happen or what has happened historically if there's been a contested election. And we know that Trump has talked about the potential um, for a contested election in the US. And um, so we, if, if we do get a contested election, what we tend to see is a period of, of dollar weakness uh, before um, some dollar strength kicks in and thinking about those 100 days post an election. So again, if, we, if, if, uh, if Biden wins or the, the result is so close uh, next week and Trump starts to talk about uh, a, you know, a legal challenge, then we could expect a little bit of weight in terms of the dollar. Um, the seasonal charts that we looked at last week in terms of thinking about a low in the dollar into the election, they seem to be playing out at the moment. We were looking for a high in the euro into the election. And, uh, and we certainly we've seen a peak currently in terms of the euro. In terms of cable, we were looking or we, we were thinking about a mid-November peak on that buy the rumor, sell the fact type setup in cable as we inch closer and closer to the potential uh, for a um, for a for for the uh, the Brexit deal to, to be announced and agreed. Uh, certainly, market participants and are kind of a view now that the there is there's more downside likely in terms of a deal not being agreed than there is upside likely if a deal is agreed. So, I want to bear that in mind as well. That mid November. Uh, potential peak there from a seasonal perspective. This is uh, again. This is sterling going back, um, going back uh, 
20 years in terms of US elections. So this is, a, this is an aggregate of the price action. So we could look for a, a mid-November peak in terms of sterling. And then uh, we look for the dollar yen to make a low. Um, and that's potentially, you know, this is, on this chart, obviously it's a high, but we talked, I talked last week about the ideal of inversions in terms of these cycles. And, um, and again, we can certainly see that the dollar potentially um, puts in a low and that would obviously drive the, um, the dollar yen to make a low. Uh, this is gold. Again, thinking in terms of inversion, the idea that gold would make a high prior to the election and then trade weaker. And, um, and that's obviously backed up in terms of that other chart that I shared with you here. Uh, 2016, we saw that pullback in terms of gold. Um, and uh, last but not least, uh, copper to make a high prior to the election. And now what we're going to do is move into the actual charts, the, the trading charts, and we'll see how this type of uh, sentiment and seasonality and cyclical information is starting to play out in, uh, in the markets. So um, first of all, as well, just want to check back with these, these, these fractals that I'd, I'd shared uh, or have been tracking. So um, we were looking for a, another high in terms of the dollar index before um, a consider a, a a re-emergence of supply in the market and a, an extension to the downside. This pattern that appears to be uh, holding at the moment. Obviously, it's, uh, it's, it will require a secondary low and a high then to occur um, before we could see another leg to the downside. So the pattern is still, it's still in play. It's not tracking as well as it had been previously. But again, that's the nature of these, pa of these patterns and these <coughs> fractal overlays. They, like I say, they rhyme as opposed to necessarily repeat, but certainly as we hold current lows, we could expect another leg upside in the dollar index. <coughs> the euro, looking for a leg lower to challenge that 115 similarities here to the price action from September through to uh, November in terms of the euro. Um, the Aussie is another one I'm tracking here, um, looking for the Aussie to break lower now and um, and get a move to the downside similar to what we saw again same time scale in terms of um in terms of a low here into december with the um with the aussie so those are the those those are those fractal patterns that i'm again just tracking not specifically trading off but certainly where we see them syncing up with potential setups then we want to uh, be cognizant of what's what's potentially on offer. So let's move into the charts. I've got a bunch to go through. I'm going to whip, uh, try and whip through these today as we do have the ECB press conference coming up uh, just at, uh, just after half past one here. So dollar index, um, two key areas we've got here. This is the support at the moment. If we hold the support at this 92.45, then what we've got the potential for is a um, an equality objective to play out. So. If we can hold 92.45, then we can expect this pattern to play out. So an ABC correction taking us back up into uh, these prior lows, uh, prior support to act as resistance. So if we get up in there and then we see, uh, then I'll be looking for another leg of downside. But equally, whilst we hold um, 93.92, then there is a, a competing pattern to the downside, which, um, which would suggest that we trade uh, down into this 92.16 ahead of the elections. Now, obviously, at the moment, we've got a bid. We've broken out of the, uh, the down channel that we've been in. So there is potential for us to challenge this 93.92, but we certainly want to see a close through there to open up the potential to trade towards that equality objective. And again, even though we, you know, even once we get up here, this is the chart is still bearish um, in, the, in the medium term, but we could see corrected upside in terms of the dollar. That's uh, the... Uh, the broader dollar versus six currency pairs. This is the equal weighted dollar index versus the Euro, Aussie, Yen and Sterling. You can see we're trading right up into the resistance area here. If we can get through here, then we have the equality objective um, versus this structure here, which would have us up into this 122.60 area. Now, if we can't break 120.95, then again, we have the competing downside target at 119, uh, sorry, 1940. So it's pit, we're, we're testing pivotal um, resistance here in the dollar, near-term resistance. <coughs> 
Swissy, uh, obviously trading uh, relatively similar to the dollar index, uh, has to get through 91.67 to, uh, to suggest further upside to challenge this descending trend line at the 93.34. Whilst we hold 91.67, still see the potential for us to trade down into the descending trend line support before um, trying to make a recovery there in terms of the Swissy. Yen broke down through um, channel support. Now with this dollar strength, we're seeing a bit of a pullback here. So if we can get a close, a bullish close back through uh, 104.50, then this could be a, a false break to the downside and open up a move to test the trend line resistance at 106.62. Let's check in with the euro. Um, <clears throat> currently short the euro. We got a move down. Uh, we've retested the support area here. Um, looking, uh, ideally looking for this to break, set up a move to test that 115 equality objective. But if we hold support, then I can easily see us trading back up through 118, retesting this trend line support, then as resistance uh, before making a move down to trade to that ideal objective of the 115 handle. So we'll, uh, we'll have to see how the, the press conference feeds into the euro here. We're anticipating um, Lagarde to strike a dovish tone, certainly with economies across Europe shutting down again at the moment and, uh, and fears of this second wave. So we'll have to see, um, but held, held support, whilst we hold the support, there is still an upside objective at 119. So you can see how similar to the dollar, um, we're really, a bunch of these pairs now are all trapped in a very well-defined range. And my sense is they're unlikely to break out of these ranges unless we get some sort of supply or demand shock to the market. Um, around some type of news catalyst ahead of the election. So people are, or, or market participants, are less inclined to take on big positions in front of, uh, in front of this uh, US election. But we're testing pivotal support here. If we break, then, uh, then we look for 116 ahead of 115 in the euro dollar. Euro yen breaking down. Whilst, uh, whilst we hold 125.11 as resistance, we have an equality objective at 120.46 for the euro yen. Euro Aussie, I've, uh, I've just been filled here on the long side in the euro Aussie. Um, uh, we, we tested into trendline support, got this big bullish outside reversal. And, um, and I'm now long the euro Aussie. I'm certainly looking for a test into this 170 area as, uh, as the initial upside objective. Watch for um, watch for resistance coming here 169.20. But long the Euro Aussie at the moment. Euro Kiwi also has a similar setup. We've held third test of this descending, uh, sorry, the descending trend line support. We broke through briefly, but strong recovery yesterday. So looking for follow through here to set uh, a, an upside objective. Once we can get through this descending trend line resistance, which comes in now 179.82 then we could see the, uh, the Euro Kiwi extend up to 184, which again is an equality objective versus this structure. So that's the pattern we're looking at. Oops, let's draw that back in. So that's the pattern we are looking for in terms of the Euro Kiwi, if we can hold current support. <coughs> Sterling Swiss still just really tra range, uh, range trade there. Nothing, uh, nothing doing. I was looking for a topside break when we got this big outside reversal, but we are we're constricted by the range at the moment. Sterling dollar is uh, is starting to look a little weaker here. Um, we've broken out of the ascending trend line support that we were trading in, and certainly if we get a close at or into these current lows at one twenty nine eighteen then um, we can easily make the case for the sterling to uh, trade down to 123.79 here. Let's just bring in the Fib retracement and see if we've got any confluence at that level. So yeah, you can actually see that's the 50% retracement of this move off the lows here. So if we can get a breach here of that 129, then, um, then certainly you can reasonably start to think about a move like this in terms of the sterling for setting up again on the long side. Um, <clears throat> so watching the close here in sterling today, uh, if we can close at or below this 129, then I think we 
and easily see a move down to 125. Similar story here in uh, Sterling Kiwi. Uh, whilst we hold this uh, 137.83, we start to roll over here. Let's just move that and look at the downside targets. So versus this structure, we, uh, we can look for a move to 128.25. So that's the equality objective. And again, let's draw these in. <coughs> Oops. So A, B, C, D, quality objective there, 128.25. So again, a breach here of the, of the, the, the lows from yesterday, and, um, and that would be the, the downside objective. Obviously, we can anticipate some support or initial support at the 133 test, but ultimately we've got a, an equality objective at 128.25. Um, Sterling Aussie, looking at uh, this one on the long side, we, uh, we broke out, retested the descending trend line um, support, uh, sorry, resistance of support, big bullish outside reversal candle yesterday. And, um, and this, could, uh, this could set up for a move to test the top side of the trend, uh, the trend channel here at 187.75. Um, Aussie, rolling over. I'm looking to get short the Aussie through, um, through the 70 cents handle, and I'm looking for a move down to the equality objective at 68.38 as the, as the initial downside target on, um, on the Aussie. Aussie yen, I'm short the Aussie yen as of, uh, as of this morning, and I'm at least looking for a test here of the 72 handle. May get a bounce there, but if, we, if the buyers aren't at home at 72, then we've got uh, the 161 extension. So that's of this structure here. This is the equality objective at the 161. And that comes in, uh, coincides with the, um, let's just bring that down there like that, uh, the 50% retracement. So, um, so if we don't get, if we, get, if we don't catch a bid here at the 72 handle, then, uh, then you can look to trade this down to the 69.40 area, 50% retracement and 161 extension of that structure. Aussie Swiss, also in a bearish pattern now. And uh, if we take out the, the overnight lows here, then we look for a test of uh, 63.68 before moving lower. And um, the Aussie Swiss held perfectly the symmetry swing uh, resistance. So we have this leg here, versus this pullback and we held that on a closing basis. And so that sets up, uh, sets up certainly a retest of the support here and potentially a deeper move into the, uh, the 63 area would be where, uh, so sorry, 62.50 and, uh, and that's the area of, um, of interest. Let's just take a look. Fib retracement in second, bring that in there. So that would be that would bring us into. I mean, that's just thirty eight point two percent retracement of this uh, of the entire advance here. So uh, perfectly reasonable to expect that test in terms of the Aussie Swiss Aussie CAD. Also setting up in a bearish channel, um, looking for a move through yesterday's lows at uh, at ninety three sixty seven, and certainly then look for a test of. Um, let's draw this in. So we'd be through the equality objective. So then what we'd be looking for is the 161 extension, which would have us down at 91.31. That would be the next downside target for the Aussie CAD. Aussie Kiwi <coughs> broken down through the channel. I was looking to see if that channel support would hold for potential long positions, but it hasn't. And so, uh, so now look for the Aussie Kiwi to test support at the 105.60 area. Could see a bounce from there. That, to my mind, will be corrective and will be another opportunity on the downside. But uh, watch for bullish reversals here because there's certainly a counter trend opportunity in terms of the Aussie Kiwi from that level. Um, Kiwi dollar, I've, uh, I've just got Phil short this this morning as well. Looking at this potential head and shoulders scenario, um, can certainly see the potential now versus this structure. 
<coughs> to get a test down to 64.30. Obviously, anticipate it to be sticky here in terms of uh, in terms of support at the these prior lows. So 65 would be the initial area where we might uh, might find it a bit sticky. But ultimately, look for the equality objective now versus this structure. Put this in. So 64.37 is the is the down, current downside target for that move in terms of the Kiwi. <clears throat> and short the Kiwi yen and looking for it to break down now and test uh, 68.70 through there. And we can uh, look at 68.17. And then again, in terms of uh, equality objective versus this swing here, replicating itself here, then we can look for uh, 67.17. 15 as the primary objective uh, for this pattern. Let's just check where that comes in in terms of uh, good retracements. So yeah, that sits at about 38.2% retracement. So that's uh, that's the downside objective on this Kiwi Yen as we uh, as we trade lower here. So just want to check in now with um, some of these risk assets. So this is the S&P 500. Whilst we hold uh, the 3550 area, we can look for a test of 3170, which is again, thinking in terms purely of equality objectives. We have that pattern there. So that's what I'd anticipate. We, I can, we can easily see this um, support tested into, uh, into the elections next week as, uh, as traders look to pair risk, basically. Uh, NASDAQ has a similar pattern looking for the equality objective here. So this swing versus this swing should put us down into support here at the uh, one of uh, the 10,400 level is, uh, is what we look for in terms of the NASDAQ. Gold, this is gonna be an interesting one next week. Like, we, like I was just saying, there's the potential for some weakness here in gold in terms of the, these pre-election cycles. So if we take out support in gold at the 1850, look for 1825, 1802, that's the uh, symmetry swing target versus this leg here and the equality target versus this uh, A, B, C, D. So the equal legs there would have us into 1802, 1825. If buyers don't show up there, then I'd be looking for a move down into this 1750 area as the next downside objective for gold. So um, gold's going to be an interesting uh, chart come the, the election evening. We saw some wild price action in 2016 in gold. So um, I'd be watching for how we trade out of the election results. And, um, and really, I don't suggest, or certainly would suggest trading with that flow because uh, that can be uh, that can be really uh, a significant driver for, for the gold price action, um, how we come out of the election. Uh, last but not least, I'm going to check in with a few of these. Copper breaking down as anticipated. And if we can get through the uh, 303 handle here, then, uh, then I'm looking for 293 in terms of copper as the next downside objective. And that should drag down these uh, commodity currencies. Uh, crude oil on the back foot, looking for 34.19 as the equality objective. And, um, and we'll see if, uh, if, if we catch a bid here at 34.19. If, if we don't, then we look for uh, the 31, 31 handle is the next downside target in terms of, um, in terms of crude. Lastly, Bitcoin, it's been uh, on a decent ride here since we discussed it a few weeks ago. And, um, and I'm looking for any pullbacks into uh, 12,480, uh, watch for bids to emerge there. And I think then you can target and move up to 14,500 as the next upside objective. So I've rattled through a few charts there today, guys. Um, want, to, uh, want to try and jump onto this ECB press conference and see, uh, see how Lagarde's positioning herself. Are there any questions? anyone has a chart they want me to look at, I haven't covered quickly, uh, you can type it into the chat box. Otherwise, an N in the chat box to let me know we're all on the same page and I'll, uh, I'll wrap the webinar up here and then we'll reconvene this time next week and uh, should, be a, should be a very interesting session next week. <coughs> okay, thanks very much everyone for joining and, uh, and I hope you found this useful.